Creating an in-game store that captivates and delights players is a key aspect of modern game design. But creating a store that resonates with players, as well as overcomes the technical challenges associated with App Store integrations and purchase validation, can be a challenge. Inspired by the vibrant and engaging stores in games like Fall Guys, where players can acquire everything from whimsical skins to loot boxes packed with rare items, your focus should be on crafting a store that keeps players coming back. This is where Hero's economy system comes into play, an integral part of our game development framework that simplifies the creation of a fully functional in-game store. In this guide, we'll explore how to use the economy system to build your in-game store by configuring the available items, integrating them into your game's UI, managing player purchases, and ensuring they receive their rewards seamlessly. So let's dive in and unlock the secrets to creating an exciting in-game store. Let's start by taking a look at our server runtime code. Inside our main.go file, you'll see our familiar init module function where we register and initialize hero. The main thing to note here is that we're registering hero with the economy system, passing in the base economy JSON configuration and specifying true to register the economy system's RPCs with Nakama. Let's take a look at the base economy JSON file. Here, inside our initialize user property, we're initializing each new player with a number of currencies. We're giving them 10,000 coins and 1,000 gems, both of which will be currencies used within the in-game store. Next, we define the store items property. Here is where we'll define every item available within our virtual in-game store. You can see that I've defined a number of cosmetic items here available for the player to purchase. The first one, the biohazard skin, is inside of the cosmetics category. It has a cost of 499 gems, and when purchased, it will reward the player with a single item, the cosmetic skin biohazard item. And you can see that they'll receive a minimum of one of this item. I've defined a number of these skins available for purchase, some of which cost gems, and some cost coins. These store items define a simple one-to-one -one mapping between a price and what the player will receive. But what if we want our players to be able to purchase something that has a luck-based reward? We can do that using the weighted reward properties within Hero. You can see here that I've defined a store item called Lucky Chest. This Lucky Chest costs 199 gems, and inside of its reward property, we have this weighted property here. This weighted property takes an array of loot tables that the player could receive. Each loot table has a defined weight, which will then be rolled for within Hero based on a random chance. The first of these weighted tables has a defined weight of 1, and if the player rolls for this reward, they'll receive the cosmetic skin Rockstar, as well as a number of coins between 1000 and 2000. However, at a much larger weight, for example here, weight 9, we have this second loot table, which rewards the player with between 20,000 and 30,000 coins, in multiples of 1,000. You can see that for this reward, we've defined the total weight to be 10, and we've said that the player will only receive one roll towards this reward. This means the player has a 1 in 10 chance of receiving the skin as well as the currency, or a 9 out of 10 chance of receiving the larger amount of currency. We've also defined an epic chest. Similar to the lucky chest, this also has some weighted rewards. Here, we've defined three reward tables, with various weights assigned to them. The first rewards a skin, as well as some currency. The second rewards two skins, and again, some currency. And the third rewards just currency itself. Again, we have a total weight of 10, and for each of these, you can see the defined weight means that the user will have a 2 in 10 chance of receiving this, a 4 in 10 chance of receiving this table, and again, a 4 in 10 chance of receiving just the currencies themselves. Let's take a look at the client-side code now to see how we interact with the economy system's virtual store. Inside of our client code, we have an in-game shop manager class. Here, we have several properties that define various UI elements within our game, and then we have some private references to both the Nakama system as well as the economy system within Hero. Inside of the init async function, we use Hero's get system extension method to grab a reference to both the Nakama system as well as the economy system. We then define a system observer to observe any changes to the economy system. 
once a change has been observed, we'll get a callback to the on economy system change function defined below. And then finally within our init async function, we'll await a refresh of both the Nakama system and the economy system to ensure we have the latest information from the server. Inside our on economy system change function, first we update both our coins and gems display text within the user interface based on the values coming back from the economy system's wallet data. Next, we'll clear out any existing shop items that are already in the user interface. And then we'll iterate through all of the store items currently held within the economy system. We'll order them by name for consistency. And for each, we'll instantiate a shop item prefab, passing in the various information to display in the user interface, such as its category, its name, as well as its cost values. And finally, we'll attach an event handler to the onClick function so that we can initialize a purchase action whenever the user clicks on the item in the store. Inside the onShopItemClick function, we'll get a reference to the item ID the user is trying to purchase. With this, we'll call the economy system's purchase store item async, passing in that item ID. The response of this will be a purchase acknowledgement, which will contain information telling us whether or not the purchase was successful, and if so, what the reward was for that particular purchase. As well as calling the purchase store item async function, we'll also refresh the economy system to make sure we have the most up-to-date information from the server. And then we'll show the reward panel, passing in the returned reward object so that we can display to the user what they received. If an error occurred during the purchase, we'll show the error panel to the user. Now let's take a look at what this looks like in our game. You can see that we have our shop window open here, our user currently has 10,000 coins and 1,000 gems, which is what we configured inside the initialize user section of the economy configuration within Hero. Next, you can see all of the skins that we defined inside our economy JSON file, as well as both the epic chest and the lucky chest weighted reward table store items. Let's start by purchasing the wolf skin for 299 gems. You can see that the purchase was successful and we've received one wolf skin item. You'll also notice that our gem count decreased by 299. Next, let's purchase the Rockstar skin for 999 coins. Again, we received the Rockstar skin item and our coins have depleted by 999. Next, let's try and purchase one of the weighted reward chest options. We'll go with the lucky chest option. Here you can see that we've received 25,000 coins. Let's try our luck again and see what we get this time. This time you can see that our luck has improved and we've received both the Rockstar skin as well as 1500 coins. Now we have 104 gems left. Let's see what happens when we try to make a purchase for more than that amount. You can see that the purchase failed and we didn't receive any items. Let's now have a look at the Nakama console and see how this looks in the storage engine for the user. If we drill into our user account here and head over to the storage section, you can see that we have a storage object here for our inventory. Let's click into this and head to the tree view to more easily see what the user has. You can see that the user has three items here, two of the Rockstar Cosmetic skin, which we received both from the direct purchase as well as from the Lucky Chest purchase, and one of the Cosmetic skin wolf item. If we head back into the user's account now, you'll also notice that inside of our wallet, the user now has 104 gems, as well as 35,501 coins, both of which were increased or decreased via the purchases made and the rewards received. Hopefully this shows you how quick and easy it is to integrate a virtual store within your game using Hero's powerful economy and inventory system features. Our Hero Game Development Kit makes implementing complex meta gameplay systems, such as the one you've seen here, extremely quick and easy with our configuration driven and composable meta systems, such as inventory, economy, energies, progression, and more. We empower developers to add engaging gameplay features at breakneck speed, cutting development times by as much as 12 months. If you'd like to learn more about how Hero can help power your next game, head on over to heroiclabs.com slash hero where you'll find all the information you need to get started. If you have any questions, please reach out to us on our community forums at forum.heroiclabs.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.